Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. To join our community, go to myworstinvestmentever.com and receive the risk reduction checklist I created from the lessons I've learned from all my guests. And also get my weekly email to help you increase your investment return. And in the community, you will get a super special podcast listener discount on my six-week Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp. The bootcamp is for those who want to learn exactly how to value companies like a pro and advance their career in finance. Go to myworstinvestmentever.com to join the community for free. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts, and I'm here with featured guest, Daniel Chan. Daniel, are you ready to rock? I am ready. Something tells me we are going to have some fun. Something tells me, ladies and gentlemen, and let me tell you why. I want to introduce you to Daniel Chan. Daniel Chan is a pre-IPO PayPal financial operations employee who became a magician, and now he's pivoted to Zoom. He's performed over 390 virtual shows since last year. What's cool is that he has invested in most of the companies that have hired him. And ladies and gentlemen, the clients that he has is literally a who's who from A to Z. He has performed for Apple and Airbnb all the way down to the amazing company Zillow. And Google has hired him over 40 damn times. That's pretty impressive, Daniel. Take a minute and fill any further tidbits about your life. Yeah, um, I have performed for billionaires in Sun Valley, Idaho at the Allen and Company Conference, which is a famed conference where Bill Gates and Warren Buffett uh, go. Um, I have performed in Germany, Shanghai, Las Vegas, and even Japan four times. And uh, over the last 20 years, I probably did 250 plus shows a year. And that's uh, over 5,000 shows over the last 20 plus years. And um what you know when I when we were talking from the beginning before we turned on the uh, the recorder, I feel like you know you're a funny and a fun guy. What is is comedy go together with magic or are they very different things? I love comedy. Uh, I used to do comedy magic before I had the real chops, but now I love doing this a little bit more serious. Uh, branding, which is the Dan Chan, the millionaire's mentalist, because I s primarily specialize in mind reading now over Zoom. So that is a different texture for every, you know, 100 magicians that are good. There's probably only one mind reader mm. that does strictly mind reading. And that's like you you take it to the next level. You're not doing your cups and balls or um, the, the other routines. Right. Interesting. And just out of curiosity, because I know that there's a lot of people listening who have had to make a transition onto Zoom, uh, and they've done well in some cases, not so well in others, but magic just does not seem to be like something that you can transition to Zoom, yet you've already done more than 390 virtual shows. Tell us, how let's, do you do let's that? Do, let's do this for you real <laughs> quick. Let's open up with um, a little bit of mind reading. Uh, put your finger up like this and touch the screen and we're gonna make a virtual connection. Physically touch the screen and think of a person, place or thing that evokes a positive thought or emotion. Perfect. Got it. Um, what is it that you're thinking of, Andrew? I'm thinking of my mother. Your mother, what's mm. your mother's name? Catherine. Catherine, with a K or a C? K. It's interesting, my wife's name is Catherine as well. And I think of her often. And um, it's, it's interesting that you said that because right here I had Catherine. Wow. <laughs> so for the listeners out there, he's got my mother's name written down on a card. Yeah. And it was uh, in the view even before the trick of the effect occurred. Amazing. Amazing. So uh, right there, we can see part of the transition to Zoom is making sure that you're really bringing, you know, like connection by asking me to touch the screen, by reaching out directly to me, that type of thing. Impressive. 
Let's do one more and yes. then let's move on. Andrew, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to think of this playing card or guess what it is. It's a one in 52 selection, but it is, I'll tell you, uh, actually not the ace and not the joker. Andrew, what card do you think this is? Nine of diamonds. Nine of diamonds. Interesting that you said nine of diamonds. Did you actually happen to see the markings here on this? No, card? I didn't see anything. Let me bring it a little bit closer because if you look closely, you can see that there is a nine and a diamond right there. <laughs> and that must mean that that is the nine of diamonds. <laughs> you are good, my friend. Amazing. You are good. Oh no, I think someone else is good. So for the listeners out there, he, in fact, the card that he had holding up, that he had up, was, was an, actually the Nine of Diamonds, which is just amazing. Yeah, and if you want to see what happened, you have to jump over, over to Andrew's uh, podcast, uh, uh, YouTube channel, so that mm. you can see exactly what I did. So let's, let's just um, wrap up this section by saying for the listeners out there who find this interesting, fascinating, and maybe they want to hire you or they want to learn from you, where should they go? You can go to danchanmagic.com or Millionaire's Mentalist, where I actually do all my magic and mind reading over Zoom. Again, that's Millionaire's, plural, Mentalist. Fantastic. Or just Google my name. Yep. Yeah. And I'll put all that in the show notes, ladies and gentlemen. So to get in touch with Dan, just go there. All right. Well, now it's time to share your worst investment ever. And since no one ever goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, Tell us a bit about the circumstances leading up to it and then tell us your story. Well, as I said before, I am a PayPal pre-IPO <laughs> financial operations employee. I joined in 1999, even before Elon Musk, believe it or not. Technically, I joined before him because he started X.com and I, I actually started at uh, PayPal proper um, and those joined together. And I was one of their first employees on University Avenue in the customer service. And they probably only had, you know, less than 20 people for wow. sure in customer service back then. Um, really, really small office. And then we went into Embarcadero, but I was granted stock options. And I think it was uh, something like 10,000 uh, stock options with a four year vest. Mm. And you have to stay at least a year to, with, for that cliff. And I stayed over a year. However, when I left, I pretty much dumped my stocks for a more diversified portfolio. And when I did the calculation, I would have been worth close to $5 million if I kept everything. But I bought like Disney and a Honda and many other things. But my Disney stock at one point went up to 900% gains. Mm at the cost basis. So I actually made 900%, but um, I didn't buy all Disney. I just bought like a handful of shares and I, I sold them throughout the time. And I think Disney would have done okay, but I just ended up buying a very conservative thing. Mm. And I should have bought like Google who was who kept on hiring me. I was like, oh, how come they have so much money? Later in my career, I ended up buying one share of every company that hired me. And the ones that I really believed in I bought more some guys like Google. I was thinking Google is one of the best investments ever. Think about this. <laughs> a little kid could click on an ad by accident and Google makes money. You can't do that with Tesla. You, you, I, I've been begging my wife for a Tesla for years. We still don't have a Tesla. And that's, thinking about what the business models are like. You have to mm. think, do, would I go there? Would I buy things from that? Like I would buy Costco, I would shop on Amazon, but I missed out on Amazon and I should have bought in early because they've hired me so many times, but you, you miss them because you look at things that are fundamentals like PE ratios. And for the longest time, Amazon was you know, not making money. And mm. I think that was strategically intentional. Like, because they wanted the tax write-offs, I guess. Right. You know, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned about it because it made me think, you know, one of the things about uh, magic that's fascinating. I, I, in, in Bangkok, we had these guys that are on the street and they sell little magic tricks and stuff. And yep. There was this one that was this plastic box. And the way it yep. went together, it just was impossible for people to figure out. It, it was so simple when you looked at it. 
I went home and I used this magic trick with all my, my nieces and everywhere I went. And, you know, what I realized when I looked at that, I thought to think to myself that, you know, we don't look very deeply into things. And, you know, part of it is also like related to socks. We just look at the surface. Ah, yeah, okay, that, this, that. But we don't oftentimes stop and go, wait a minute. Why is this company making so much money? Or why is it hiring me so many times? And how do I take advantage of that? And I just kind of, you know, see some parallel there, you know, between what you do well is you do magic well. But when it came to looking into some of these stocks and saying, I'm going to really go in on this, you know, it's a harder thing to go deeper in. Well, I, I see so many companies and I read the headlines and that's why I was so successful. Um, in fact, I caught uh, BS on Theranos before anyone else caught it. I, I was telling mm. I was telling everyone that, that was around me, this is uh, toxic. Uh, this something doesn't add up because I've read so much. And I've just been around this space so much. I just, I just felt it was wrong, and I, and I was calling it out. So, mm. uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, yep. it's just um, something that you have over time. The experience, yep. just like um, yep. when Neil and um, some of the other EV stocks, I was like, hey, they're going to perform well just because the headlines are pushing this forward, and people tend to follow celebrities mm. and follow what's trending, and it's a good thing to have some bubbles, but realize that these bubbles can pop. And I rode Neo all the way up. And as things went out, I, I slowly diversified. Mm. So I got, got to participate in Airbnb's IPO. CNBC featured me for that. I'm, uh, those might be in the show notes as well. Yep. I got uh, 200 shares at the IPO price. Um, and in order not to repeat that same mistake, I just sold 20%. And then I kept the last 80%. So I I, mm. I made I made over double and I'm gonna realize my capital gains. I really don't need the money, but I just don't want to sell all of it. And I don't wanna, <laughs> you know, it was a happy balance. Yep, yep. And you know, you've been successful. You've built up wealth by owning different stocks. You've made some mistakes. Let me ask you, what lessons have you learned from this experience? Yeah. Um, diversify mm -hmm. and then if you're sure in certain things you need to put down a little bit more chips down so i've put a lot of um, things down on other side bets like f fun things that i feel will do well like um you know sprinkler systems that will map out um the floor plan uh, mm. graze is um automated lawnmowers things like that, things that you think have full potential that you really believe in. Companies that I would start myself, I, I put in a little bit of money mm. in those, but you know, invest in things that you buy and use regularly. That's one of the safer things. And then also not to put all your eggs in one basket because yep. you know the Enrons of this world. Mm. You know, it might look great on some things, but there's, there's always some there's there can always be someone playing a trick behind the scenes so diversifying really will help you lessen the impact of that it'll also kill some of your gains as well but that is uh that will at least let you sleep well yeah we have to admit that some bad ceos are actually masters at magic making money disappear so we have to accept that well let me share two things that i take away from your story uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was the PayPal uh, situation. When you talked about diversifying, you know, and deciding you didn't want to have too much exposure, one of the lessons that I think the audience can learn from that is sometimes diversifying doesn't mean selling what you have. It means putting additional money into something else. So let's just imagine that you have only PayPal as an example, and you're exposed heavily to it, but you like the story and all that. Okay, so every bit of money, cash that you make on a monthly basis, then put that into something else. So try to build up. Now, one option in that case could have been to put it in a, uh, let's say, an index fund that owns every stock in the world. And you just say, look, I've got one really risky bet in this one, and I got this index fund. And so I'm, I'm balanced there. Or start to add you know, other individual stocks. But the point that I would make is that sometimes when we get into managing it, we get scared and we think the option, only option is to just reduce. So that's the, the first thing uh, about it. The second thing is that um, 
when you, you know, you're giving, I think, really good advice, which is to consider investing in the things that you know, but you're also giving another piece of advice that I think is also kind of unique in your situation because you've tried to kind of buy the shares of the different companies that you've worked with. So you actually are putting uh, your money into the things that you think are interesting, but you are also diversifying that. So I think the lesson for everybody out there is that when you basically decide, like the mistake that some people make is they say, oh yeah, I love Amazon and I'm, I'm an Amazon Prime member. I have a, one of my former guests or a, a potential guest actually, he shared the fact that he missed Amazon Prime, though he used it all the time. But that doesn't mean you have to put all your money. So diversify. Yep. Yeah. So that's what I would take away from what you've said, those two things. Anything that you would add to that? Um, no, I think that summarizes it very well. Yeah. So based upon what you learned from this story and what you continue to learn in your life, what one action would you recommend our listeners take to avoid suffering the same fate? Yeah, uh, just analyze what makes you uniquely you. You probably have some insights from your direct area like i live in silicon valley so i know all these companies like uh, when yahoo was hot they hired me like half a dozen times apple half a dozen times i would just study them and read more about their headlines and what i was truly interested in and which was investing mm. like i would have said i love apple products i love the premium a lot of people will say oh, i don't want to pay the extra for apple i'm like hell i don't care if they're uh, that's my company i don't mind feeding that. And mm. I, I buy Google ads. I buy Google AdWords. I really love that. I can, when someone hits skip ad, I still make, uh, I, I don't have to pay when you skip an ad, you don't pay for it, but there's a lot of people who forget to skip the ads and you pay for those in brand impressions, but Google outperforms every other platform mm. in terms of when you're buying a YouTube ad to build brand awareness. So looking around you and being aware, like whenever I look up, I see these Cisco routers or these th things that you, you see, I'm like, oh, they're everywhere. Oh, government's buying it. Where do I go? Like when I log in at, um, I used to be a Coast Guard reservist. I would see that we log in and it's Oracle login. Oh, wow, Oracle has a government contract. Those, those are great. So just look at everything and then look at the bottom line, learn how to read the three financial statements Mm. You know, understand an income statement, understand, you know, uh, profit loss, and then also understand debt to equity ratios yep. and uh, PE ratios. And those are some of the basics. You're always going to learn more, but ask yourself what makes it tick. Mm. You know, I think Great. a lot of, a lot of things are a little bit hyped with things like uh, larger things like Virgin Galactic. I have one, one or two shares of that, but I think it's more like a celebrity mm. buy. Mm. It's kind of like they're losing money, their, their metrics are totally off the wall, but just bought one share just to say it. And when now I talk to a reporter, I can say, I, I own some of it if it blows up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, one of the best ways to make money is by, um, you know, hiring a magician maybe. Oh, he's holding up a dollar, folding it up and snapped his fingers. And what is coming out? That is a $100 bill. So he just turned $1 into 100, ladies and gentlemen. I want to hang, hang around you, Dan. <laughs> That's a great, a great way to, to wrap that up. Now, let me ask you, what's your number one goal for the next 12 weeks? Sorry, next 12 months, 12 weeks. Why did I say that? I'm all over the place. I'm, I just talked to a producer at NBC. We we're talking about unscripted reality. Uh, those are uh, like some of my home run goals. I'm also trying to find investors for a magic and dinner show and a club in Silicon Valley. I've already hit everything that I've already wanted to do. And I still can coast 20 more years doing these corporate events, these epic parties where they have, you know, 400 pound tigers in their backyards. <laughs> like how many people throw parties with those? But when you are, you know, when, when you've done such amazing things um you just want to go a little bit further so i have a lot of goals that i'm putting out there and feelers but if an opportunity opens up i'm just going to pursue that one goal yep you know like if agt opens up for my son mm -hmm. uh, my son performs with me at the age of five he was juggling three balls by the age of eight he was juggling five balls by the age of 10 he was picking pockets and juggling three flaming torches 
Um, by the age of 12, he already had two national television appearances, one for uh, Kids Say the Darndest Things, and he also performed for Penn and Teller on Access Daily. So mm. it, my son is getting into the um, business. He's taking over the family segment as I hopefully transition more fully to Zoom. And I think that the Zoom platform is super exciting because now I have a national reach. And that's why I'm you know, doing this uh, tour circuit on these mm. uh, podcasts is not a lot of people realize that Zoom magic really works and it's very powerful. That's exciting. And that's exciting to learn about your, your son's success too. Sounds like that could be part of your retirement plan. Son, make a lot of money and take care of your dad. <laughs> and for the listeners out there who want to learn about the three different financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement, I actually have a course for that. It's called Finance Made Ridiculously Simple. And if you become a member at myworstinvestmentever.com, you'll get a 25% discount on that course. So my last question for you, what, Daniel, is your number one goal for the next 12 months? Uh, I don't really um, plan that far out. I, I have a couple of small goals and I set some low hanging fruit. I want to stage at um, a, a restaurant that I just went back to, California's. Uh, I have a hobby of going into these Michelin rated fine dining establishments. So mm. that's one of my, I'm yep. going to at least go in for a couple of days and stage at California's. That's my one goal. Got it. And you know, you're getting old when you repeat the same question over and over. All right, listeners, there you have it. Another story of loss to keep you winning. My number one goal for the next 12 months is to help you, my listener, reduce risk and increase return in your life. To achieve this, I've created our community at myworstinvestmentever.com. Join up and get that special discount on Finance Made Ridiculously Simple and also on my six-week valuation masterclass boot camp so we can identify the companies where the CEOs are magicians because we don't want magicians running companies. We want them making magic. As we conclude, Daniel, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. And on behalf of A Stotts Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment. Do you have any parting words for the audience? Uh, thank you for ha giving me this opportunity to be on your podcast, Andrew. It's great to have you. And that's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our well fellow risk takers. This is your worst, literally. Your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott, saying, I'll see you on The Upside.